Plants vs. Zombies is a tremendously popular video game franchise that originated 11 years ago with the debut of its first computer game in 2009. What started as a simple tower defense game ended up becoming one of Electronic Arts' most lucrative properties, with that simple video game becoming one of the most popular casual video games of all time. Supposedly the franchise still belongs to PopCap, the original developers, but it's been almost a decade since EA bought PopCap so it doesn't really matter. Being so impressively popular, I'm not surprised that when I asked our audience what mysteries they would like me to investigate, Plants vs. appeared. Zombies a few times. After all, even though the latest video games have fallen quite a bit in popularity, with Plants vs. Zombies 3 released without anyone knowing, Battle for Neighborville barely a blip on the radar, Plants vs. Zombies 1 and 2 still have plenty of fans. So, yeah, it was to be expected some questions about plants that end apocalyptic threats by shooting peas at them. And that's because, honestly, I never finished the first Plants vs. Zombies, and therefore I had no idea that the zombies kidnapped Dave in the end. I assumed that Dave was with you throughout the whole game, and then in Plants vs. Zombies 2 would request hot sauce for its taco, and that's when the strange story of that game started. All good. But I was extremely, extremely mistaken. First, I suppose I need to clarify to you what we observe in the concluding scene of Plants vs. Zombies 1, if you can even call it that, for a dialogue that lasts a few seconds. Before the final level, Crazy Dave warns you about Doctor. Zomboss is coming, but he tells you not to worry because he knows his weakness. After several failed attempts to remember Doctor's weakness, Zomboss, a sneaky zombie, comes from behind and grabs Dave just as he was about to reveal the secret to defeat the Doctor. Zombies and Doctor's giant robot battle commences, Zomboss and the zombies ultimately face defeat. The robot is destroyed and the credits roll, along with an adorable music video of a sunflower singing through the levels of Plants vs. Zombies. Actually, what he was going to tell us is not such a big mystery. With trial and error, we learn what the weaknesses of the giant zombie robot that the doctor controls are. Hit him in the head and use frozen jalapenos and mushrooms to defend against his attacks and hurt him. However, it doesn't clarify Dave's fate. They snatch him, just like that. In Plants vs. Zombies 2, it abruptly emerges out of thin air. So what are they not telling us? When I first started investigating this particular mystery, my instinct was to check if there was any information about Plants vs. Zombies. Zombies 2 is a direct sequel. As we all know, there are more games in the franchise. We have all three games from the Garden Warfare series, Garden Warfare 1, 2 and Battle for Neighborville. Furthermore, it's Plants vs. Zombies 3, released in early access a few weeks ago, and Plants vs. Zombies Heroes, a digital card game launched in 2016. There was also a full-fledged Facebook game centered around Plants vs. Zombies with the subtitle Adventures, but the truth is that none of this is very helpful to us because Plants vs. Zombies is a franchise that tends to be ridiculously inconsistent. It turns out that Plants vs. Zombies not only have video games, but they have also released comic book series about the franchise and even several books and stuff like that. The thing is, there are many historical elements that simply don't get along well among these different works of fiction. For example, in the comics, it's Dave who creates all the plants in his lab, while in the first video game, we have seed packets with the brand of a company known as Bloom and Doom Seed Corporation, which seems to indicate that this corporation made all the plants for war purposes or something like that. And what's worse is that in the second game, they introduce time travel and we see plants and zombies fighting in prehistoric times prior to humans. The thing gets even worse when we see that in Garden Warfare there's Rose, a plant that comes from the past, and there's a sign that shows that Dr. Zomboss and Dave collaborated at a science fair, creating the illusion of zombies and humans peacefully coexisting together. In Plants vs. Zombies 3, a huge evil tower owned by the zombies is introduced which is unprecedented. A crucial element in the storyline is an artificial sun invented by Dave, previously unknown. So yeah, it's obvious that they don't put much effort into maintaining consistency. Merging games poses problems. For instance, Garden Warfare 1 was theorized to occur between Plants vs. Zombies 2 and Plants vs. Zombies 3. Zombies 1 and 2, but honestly, in that video game, there are scarcely any story elements. Actually, there's this awesome theory that tells us that they're actually parallel timelines, and that's why there are so many inconsistencies, but today we won't focus on that. Since everything is confusing, today we'll focus on the specific moment between the first and second game, and to avoid the video from dragging on excessively, we'll talk about what we can see in that part of the timeline, 
because otherwise time travel and parallel universes would come into play and things would get more complicated for us. Having this clear, another pretty obvious problem arises and that is, well, it looks like we're back to square one. No other comics, video games or external references to what happened and apparently Plants vs. Zombies 2 takes place a few weeks after the first video game so it doesn't mention anything about Dave's kidnapping so we have to find the answer within Plants vs. Zombies 1 as impossible as it may seem. So what do we do now? Well every time we finish level 9 of each of the areas in Plants vs. Zombies as an introduction to the final level of the area we get a note from the zombies. We have 6 notes and at first glance they don't seem important. In the first note, for example, they say they'll attack your house, in the second one, that they want to come over for a midnight snack, and in the third one, that they're coming to your pool party. They all seem to be funny, including number 5, which is written by Dr. Zombos. This was written with a much higher calligraphy and grammar than the others, and it's basically the doctor threatening us if we don't hand over our delicious brains, using a pretty intellectual vocabulary. And indeed they do not seem important until we realize that they subtly demonstrate to us how things are progressing on the side of the zombies. Let me explain, up until note 4 the zombies write to you in a pretty dumb way and even though they try to trick you by saying in note 4 that they are your mom and invite you to dinner, it's obvious that all of that was written by brainless zombies. Grade 5 is from the doctor, Zomboss, and from there the game becomes much more challenging. Actually, it's in the next area where the giant robot arrives and where the game ends. This suggests that initially zombies were only driven by their love for brains, but between Note 4 and 5, that is, between the foggy areas and the roof of the house, Dr. Zombie's motivations evolved. Zombos assumed control of the operation, so to speak. That is the reason he emerges in the area that comes after Note 5, and that is why, once we defeat him and the Doctor surrenders, Note 6 is authored by the zombies instead of the Doctor. In other words, once we beat him, Dr. Zombos no longer controls the zombies. And what does this have to do with Dave? Well, the Note 6 that we received after Dave got kidnapped says the following. Alright, you win. We will not consume brains any longer. Now we simply desire to create a music video with you. Honestly, the zombies. So they surrender and we film a music video. So ultimately, the music video in which the sunflower sings is in fact genuine within the Plants vs. Zombies world. It is... Um... Canon, in a manner of speaking. This music video is precisely the one that is shown at the conclusion of the video game and here, conveniently, Dave reappears, depicting how he is abducted. This means that they didn't eat Dave's brain, although I still don't know if that dude even has a brain. Something funny is that during the sequence in which he is kidnapped, his pot falls off his head, implying that he no longer had a way to protect his brain, but in the music video Dave appears with his pot well placed, so he even managed to recover it. So, in conclusion, we can say that they simply returned it, and even though their protective pot fell off their head, nothing happened to them, maybe because their brain isn't so appetizing. And if this is not enough for you, we even have a small amount of information about what occurred between this video game and Plants vs. Zombies 2. Once you finish the adventure mode, where all this happens, you unlock mini-games, puzzles, and other game modes. One of these is called Yo Zombie and it happens after the adventure mode. We know this because in the introduction to Yo Zombie, Dave tells us that the zombies asked him for help to practice their invasion techniques on hunts. So Dave put cardboard plant cutouts in the garden for the zombies to practice. So in addition to everything mentioned before, we also know that there was a showdown between the zombies and Dave for a few days until the doctor returned. Zombos started the Plants vs. Events, Zombies 2, and well I hope you enjoyed this video. Like if that's how it happened and subscribe for more videos like this. Comment if you have anything to add to today's video or if you have more mysteries for us to solve here. And with no other words to add, please wash your hands and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.